in slalom, and most people start slaloming, uh, most people slalom long before they trick. And so they are used to ankle and knee bend in a line where both, both knees are moving forward over the ski. Um, they move a little bit differently, but they're, they're basically moving forward over the ski this way, right? So that's the knee bend in slalom. I'm tucking my back leg knee in behind my left, right? And you want that to be very compact because when you turn, you don't want your knees sprayed out. You know, you'll catch a knee in the water as you go around a ball, and that usually ends up in disaster, right? But in trick, you're never generating that kind of angle at the wake. So it's more of a curtsy position. It's like this, right? The knees move apart from each other to get the ankle and the knee bent. Now you can see when I do this, watch the relationship between this knee, hip, and shoulders. Okay? Moving back, it all stays in a line until I get really low, and then I got to drop my hips. But that's a key difference. Most people try to like fight their ski and twist into this position, and it really doesn't work. You have to allow that curtsy position to come, right? And then you can move back up. Same thing when you're back wrapping or anything like that. So for me, on the back wrap, when I come around, I end up like this, right? There's a lot of load on the arm that you can't see. It's away from the boat right now when I do it. Okay, and I'm allowing that curtsy position to happen, right? I've got this knee forward over the ski here. I've got my back knee out to the side, okay? Try to do the reverse, which would be here. And to get into it, I need to do the same thing. That's harder. Load goes to this arm this time, all right? Handle on the butt, still. But I'm allowing my legs to not tuck in like this. It doesn't work allowing them to spread kind of the knees to come apart. Big difference there between trick and slalom, ankle and knee bend. Knee and ankle bend is critical for everything in trick, slalom, doesn't matter. The more you can get, probably the better off you are. There is a point where you can get too much knee and ankle bend and you can't support it anymore. Mechanical advantage when you get too far bent goes away. But you need a significant amount for all tricks because again, it's how your body can give to changing conditions of the water without breaking at the waist and dropping your hips back. So every trick starts out with significant knee and ankle bend, and a lot of times it changes dynamically in the trick depending on how much resistance from the water you're encountering, right? On a simple back, I definitely don't want to be straight out like this. I can't move. I can't adapt to the water. Even though my weight is right, I can't adapt to the changing water conditions, right? So I want to be down a little bit. But notice, even when I go down, my hips really don't drop back, back at all. They sag maybe a little bit, but not much, all right? A lot of tricks are best initiated by being on the upward as you're going, right? You come up, and then you sink back down. And by sinking back down, you're giving yourself sort of leeway, amplitude, to absorb what's going to be happening with the water as, you, as the ski settles into that back position. So, I see a lot of people yank in straight i mean almost to the point where they're like a ballerina on their toes and that's there's no way to control it at that point in time so significant knee and ankle bend pull in resettle significant knee and ankle bend again right come up back down all right